Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Tales from the Dark Dragon's Inn, The Return to Greenest. I hope you enjoyed the catch-up episode last week. Recording it was well outside my players' usual comfort zones, but I hope you'll agree they did a fantastic job. I'd just like to take a minute to say thanks to Fry Curious, another iTunes user who left us a review. We're glad you're having as much fun as we are. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Dark Dragon's Inn. Can I take your coat? Please, come, take a seat. Sorry about the, uh, fuss. We have a guest performer tonight, you see. Well, technically, Doomsinger didn't take part in this portion of the tale, and, well, Bastyrian thought it would be less authentic if he was telling it. I hope you enjoy the show! The candles and sconces in the venue are put out. The lights dim, and your attention is focused on the stage. All at once, a small light sputters into life in the darkness. At first the light is small, but it grows, and takes the form of a small illusion in front of you. Behind it, a gnome smiles mischievously as he begins to weave his tail. The illusion clarifies and becomes not one, but many people fleeing for their lives, escorted by none other than the Scales of Justice. I'd say you're half a mile away now. What are you guys doing? I think I would be at the back because the prisoners went ahead first and I was with Doomsinger. Everyone's running around in a panic, fleeing. I did just shout the prisoners, try and stick together, but I think maybe I would have stayed at the rear of the group in case... There are any stragglers or... Yeah. Do we know how many prisoners there are? We'll go with 30. 30. Okay, cool. Not all of these people are from the town, obviously, because if you remember, there were people in various states of disrepair. So you have freed some people who were not from Greenest, as well as people who were captured in Greenest. I would try my best calm them a bit. Toby. He'd basically be making sure that people stick together and don't head in the direction of the Canyon of Doom, where they're all going to fight <laughs> Unfortunately, in. that is sort of the direction you guys headed, because only a back separated off. So we'll we'll see how that goes from there, I guess. We're gonna die. <laughs> Mix. I guess I would have been trying to keep them in one place. I was thinking, so Mix has a cantrip light. I was thinking that maybe she cast it on her hand just raising her hand to get people to follow it so that they at least have some sort of direction. You basically rush up ahead and you've got your... It does have to be on an object, but you've got something in your hand that you've cast light on and you're holding it up. Follow me. Come towards the light. I'll just use my quill, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's fine. It can be literally anything. It's fine. So you have a glowing quill. Follow the glowy feather. Come on. And we already know what Urbach did. Urbach split off from everyone else. Sneaky, sneaky. Dragging Leosin along with him, who was following quite willingly, as he is delirious. Mix still leading the way. Is Murren still taking up the rear? Where's Toby in the onward travel? I say probably around the middle then. <laughs> Scrawl's hanging in the middle, trying to be a, a presence of reassurance as he's a bugbear and ah, oh, I'm tough. I will defend you all. And given his range, he's literally able to wield the halberd that swings above the majority of their heads all at once. He's hanging in the middle. Is Toby hanging with Scraw, or is he just milling around in the crowd? Yeah, he's probably milling around in the crowd. Give them, like, a better range in case something happens. Scraw's doing his best to keep an eye on everyone from the middle. In that case, as Mix is leading the way with her glowing feather, would you like to roll a survival check for me, please, Mix? <coughs> No! Oh god. Nyx! You do actually successfully lead everyone down the path that you used to get to the camp. And you continue to lead them down that path until it disappears, but you're not really willing to admit it. You've got a pretty good idea of where you're going. You're sure it's... it was basically a straight line. It's... it's probably fine. And you continue... Leading on, waggling a feather, like, come on, everyone, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And you are very confident in where you are going. In fact, you don't even feel lost. You know exactly where you are. Perfectly thinking that I know exactly where I'm going. And everything's fine. I, I have a perfect sense of direction. It doesn't matter. Exactly. Snap to Urbach. 
you are making your way down the path that you know you followed, as in the path that leads you out of the way by about a mile. Leosin's a little bit more together than he was. He's still leaning on you heavily. I'm walking along, following the path as best as I can, and I'm going to try talking to Leosin. Ah, you, you're very beat up. You definitely do not look so good. How did you end up there in the first place? It's just... Um, he mumbles a response. It's just... Uh, he's muttering over and over again. I won't tell you anything. You can't make me... No, no more. No. No. I was planning on giving him a bit of a check. The Can I stop and sit him down? I'd like to take the time to give him a foot more for a check. It's still dark out. Do you have a light source on you? Hmm. Because it is a very dark night at this point. Okay, yeah. You just take out a torch, snap your fingers, and it lights easily. You stake it into the ground and you sit him down. On the basis that you are now giving yourself enough light to work by and you've actually stopped, you're no longer travelling, and you're focusing entirely on this man in front of you. What exactly are you looking for here? Well, a couple of things, but first just want a rough assessment of what kind of physical state he's in, in terms of uh -huh. malnutrition, deterioration, etc. Sure. And I also just wanted to examine him anatomically just to see what kind of dragon he is, if there's any, any other genetics that look like that might be in play there. From everything that you can see, this man is definitely just a silver dragonborn, as you were originally led to believe. He does have the large scar across his face, as was also mentioned. His state of nutrition and stuff like that is fine. He's only actually been hostage for about a day, so during the attack was when he was taken. And it's taking you less than a day, really, to get there. So malnutrition-wise, he's fine. Uh, he's a little bit on the lean side, but he's very muscular. So you get that it's probably intentional, and it allows him to move more swiftly with more finesse and power. In terms of his overall state, though, he is really not well. He's delirious with fever. You can see signs of heavy torture, multiple lacerations, coarsely stitched together, but not treated, per se. More like... We don't want this guy bleeding out, so we're just going to stick him back together so we can do more of this later. He's in a state of shock at the moment. Borderline PTSD situation. He is not aware of where he is. You interact with him, you try and talk to him, you snap your fingers. He doesn't seem responsive to anything that you do, but he is speaking common it's ravings, but it's fever ravings. He's just not with it. He's not aware of his surroundings. Does he seem to be able to follow my finger, or does he just seem to be trying anything like that? He doesn't seem to really be aware of his surroundings. When you were walking with him, he was capable of continuing to walk, but really only with assistance, and he doesn't seem to respond. He's looking at you with his eyes, but his eyes are not seeing you. They're seeing something completely different, and when you pay attention, his eyes are moving erratically, like they're following things, and he's just totally unaware of his surroundings. Hmm. I just want to try something a bit daft. I'm going to stand behind him. I'm going to try and ask him a question, and I'm going to try, best as I can, to mimic the voice of a furbolg, specifically the one we met in town. Nassim. Leo Sin. Leo Sin. It's me. Leo Sin. It's Nassim. Did you tell them? Did you? Unfortunately, he's still actually just completely unresponsive. Balls. Yeah, for sure. I definitely see what you were going for, but mm. he's not aware of his surroundings at all. He's not really hearing anything you're saying. Right, I'm going to have to pick him up, haul him over my back. You don't need to carry him. He's capable of walking if you want to put his arm around you, rather. I'm going to pick up the torch. So I'm going to try and keep the flame as low as possible between us. I'm going to try and just follow the track back to Green Nest, keeping a low profile as possible. It's going to be difficult, admittedly. Yeah. The path you're following will lead you around to the beginning of the cavern that you're trying to avoid, at which point it will rejoin the original path. Okay, if possible, I'm going to try and, rather than skirt around, to follow a direct path to Green Nest. So, you guys, how are you progressing forwards at this point? Is there any way for Toby to have noticed that... Toby hasn't noticed his shit. He's surrounded by people right now. He's milling in the crowd, and he's probably focused primarily on making sure the people aren't touching him. He doesn't want any of them to get lost, but some of them are particularly mangy. He's just trying to not let them get too close to him, I think. And... Well, that must have been 
think about I mean, he's not being rude about it, but he's very focused on how near people are to him, in as much as it's distracting him from really being aware of the larger surroundings. He's hyper-focused on keeping the group together and keeping everyone nearby safe. Morin, as you are taking up the rear, you hear in the distance the sound of a repeated clacking, and it's fairly rhythmic. And it's behind you. It doesn't appear to get any louder. Right. And it doesn't appear to get closer, but it does seem like it's nearby. And you look behind you, and you don't see anything. Nyx, how's it coming along, leading that party there? Nyx is feeling just dandy. I mean, she's on this kind of weird high from the fact that they actually escaped and no one's gone. Yeah, she feels great. The adrenaline of, yeah, we made it, we're not dead! You find that, looking around, you are following a path, and you are following a trail, but you get the impression the more you look around that this isn't the trail you made. There are a lot more footprints than when it was just you and Toby and Murren and Urbach and Doomsinger. There are a lot more footprints, and they're both coming and going, and you realize now that the path you've been following is probably not the right one, but it seems to be going in the right direction still. And you realize this because less than a quarter of a mile ahead of you is the canyon, which you avoided from the other side. You are close enough that if anyone is there, there is no way you are not being seen right now when there are 30 of you. 34 of you. Good. Nick stops and yells, stop, and puts out the light that she's and what she's gonna do, because she does have dark vision, is try and find Toby, relay the message that, uh, I think we're in trouble. At a glance, you can't see Toby. You know he's in there, though. You've got people like, what's what's going on? Are we, is, is everything okay? Help! Mommy, I'm making snow! Relight the quill. She's gonna shout, never mind! Light the quill. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> do, some, do some Morse code with it. <laughs> you can't see Toby, but you can probably call him over. I, I, I can feel his brow furrowing. <laughs> he's confused with what he's done, and he's whatever it is that is wrong, there has to have been a better way to do this. <laughs> yeah, he's like, not saying this on the front. At the same time, he's just trying, like, trying to tell the people he's passing to calm down and just stay yeah. away. Huh? Yeah, the moment that Mix relights the feather, people start calming down and they're looking at you. What? what what's going on? Oh, why have we stopped? We should, surely we should be hurrying. Is, the, the, what, is there someone chasing us? Yeah, yeah so, so he's making his way through this crowd. Just calm down, be quiet, and stay where you are. <laughs> well, come gather round. I will protect you with my strong arms. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> And, and you do see like, a lot of the younger people start huddling towards Scraw, and who's standing there is trying to look as heroic as he can. Which all of you can see because you have dark vision. Most of them can't because there's just this tiny little feather of light. So Toby approaches Nyx. <laughs> Hi! Hi. Hi. <laughs> he is not impressed with the joy that she says. Like, I'm just looking at her. What have you done, look? Nyx is just making the biggest eyes she can. I think we've gone the wrong way. <sighs> What and do you she's mean? Just, like, grinning. <laughs> what, how far have we gone the wrong way? I I don't think we're that far off. But you know that canyon we were mm. trying to avoid? Mm. It's right there. And she points and... And Toby can see it because he also has dark vision and it's not far enough away to avoid it. I think we might have trouble ahead. And... That, yeah, yeah. There may be trouble ahead. Our choice is basically either go in or turn back. I notice that we've stopped. When you notice that when you stop, and everyone stopped, you've no you notice also that the clacking has stopped. I'll go over to them. Um, I think we're being followed. Oh, that's oh, just good. great because you know what? He's pointing at the chasm that they're about to walk into. We have another problem. Right ahead of us. I return to the rear. <laughs> you just don't say anything, you just turn around and walk away. Great. <laughs> I'm just like standing there like, what? Nick was looking at Toby and to be offended him. So you go back to the back of the group. As you believe you're being followed, see if you can find... You don't see anything out there. Just 
empty plains, long, dark fields. Seems like they haven't pursued you at all. Whatever Doomsinger did, he's obviously made a good go of it. I know you're there. Come out! And the people behind you start worriedly panicking. Who's he talking to? Who's there? Have we been followed? Oh no! We've been followed, Frank! Mix is all Mix. of a sudden feeling less worried about. Lauren, there is no response to your demands. Yeah, of course. Toby. Hmm. Is Murren okay? Oh, he said that he thinks we're being followed, so I think he just attempted to call them out. I don't think that was a good... But immediately we need to decide what we're going to do with these 30-odd panicking people with basically Death Canyon ahead of us and possibly people following behind us. I definitely don't think there's any way we can pass through the canyon. We have to go back. We have to very carefully relay that message to them and... They're all panicked. Look! And at this point, a surly dwarf, a quite tall dwarf, but a surly one nonetheless, storms up to both of you and says, We've got to get out of here! There's who bloody knows what out there! And this, all it, my wife has spent half an hour and half a day in a bloody cage! We were treated like animals! We're going home! He's like, Come on, everyone! And he charges past you, and people follow. Oh shit. Well, shit, look over like Can I uh, restrain can him? I restrain you can him. try. I'm gonna try and restrain this very burly dwarf. Run up in front of- Look, you have to stop. You cannot go forward. If he doesn't, that, at that point, I will physically try. He slows down, but the people behind him don't. But they're not quite up to where he, you are yet. So he slows down, and he's like, Give me a one good reason! You're a dwarf. You're a dwarf. Oh, well, that's a great reason! And he shoves past you. Can I tackle him? <laughs> So he barges into you and just shoulder shoves you out of the way. You can try and grab him. That's a natural 20 with his shove, so... <laughs> he's really big. Oh my god. Sure. No, he's just very, very upset. He's trying to get his wife home and you two are dilly-dying! Very serious language there, lads. Are you gonna grab him? My crossbow right in front of him, not to hurt him, but just to- Can I stop her? <laughs> you can try. So you see Mix pull out her crossbow, looking frustrated and aiming at this dwarf. <laughs> Toby just runs up to her and like, puts his hand on the crossbow to aim it at the ground. <laughs> she does something stupid. You won't listen to me. I think at this point, the moment has passed. There's 30 odd people that we have to try and stop. More and more of these people are starting to actually walk past you now, and you get the occasional glance of someone looking at you, and a female dragonborn walks past you. You're talking to Toby, you turn to look at her, and you're, he won't listen to me! And she cuddles her little dragonborn child against her leg and hurries past. My face palms, and she's realising the hole that she's digging. The moment is past, yes, we're heading into danger, but there's also possibly danger behind us. We're just gonna have to try and make the best of it and get as many of these people out of the other side of that canyon alive, okay? Do you know what they think they found in canyons? I know, mean, <laughs> on the edge of this one with big rocks. Can we go? Before these people die with no one to protect them. <laughs> Crosses her arms and starts walking after the dwarf catch up with him, not to anything, just, okay, let's follow the people. Scraw is wandering hurriedly, trying to keep up with some of the people who are now storming ahead, and he's like, everybody, everyone stay together! Stay together! And he walks past, what the hell is going on? Past the dwarf. Bad people skills. Oh! From Toby! Let's get you a bucket of ice. <laughs> Murren. You look behind you as you see the crowd rushing ahead of you, and you look around frustrated as nobody has come forth. No one has responded to your demands. You turn back to the crowd of people who are rushing ahead and you hear... And you turn again and you hear... And you look down at your bag, and you take it off and you hear... And you put your bag down, and you open it, and you see that your hammer and crowbar have been clanging together the entire way. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound good. You see the crowd of people rushing ahead, you see Scrawl hurrying after them and trying to get- Do you let all of these people past you, or Toby and Mix, are you guys still trying to sort of keep a general lead? Yeah, Toby's trying to get to the front, because hopefully if anyone sees anything coming, it will like, be them, and they can try and do something about it. Sure. No okay. Trying to look out for any potential dangers. Mix, really. she's still at the front of between the dwarf that she's holding the grudge against, and the group of people following. So still quite in front, but she has her arms crossed and is mumbling to herself. Toby, you're rushing ahead and you think briefly of Oz. God, he doesn't have night vision. And then 
you look around and realize he's, it suddenly occurs to you that he's not on your shoulder or your horns. He's not with you right now. Well, I'll just have to unpack that later. <laughs> There's no way for me to actually locate him. Can I feel him? You can, but it's stretched. You have no idea where he is. I dismiss him. Nothing happens. I can still feel him. Mm -hmm. That's very concerning. It is this momentary realisation that since before the chaos in the mess hall, because presumably you didn't take Oz in with you, as that might have raised suspicions, you have not seen or heard from your talkative, charming bird. <laughs> you rush ahead of the majority of the people you, and you catch up with the dwarf who has thus far just about reached the entrance of this valley and is still storming he's petering out a little bit because you can only burn on anger and frustration and fear for so long and this chasm looks a little bit ominous perhaps questioning the validity of his decision making our back you're fairly confident that you're making the quickest pace that you're able to to get back to Greenest within a reasonable time frame. You are hurrying along, probably with the knowledge that if you're not able to get Leos into somewhere where he can get medical attention, either from another doctor or from yourself, but with your equipment and your appropriate tooling, and medicines that Leosin's probably going to suffer pretty badly, so you're hurrying more than you perhaps should, and your stealth is certainly failing. You can't do a huge amount of it because obviously you've got this borderline comatose person dragging his feet along, slowing you down, and your attempts to hurry him are only causing the two of you to make more noise. However, your journey does seem to be progressing reasonably well. You've made at least a mile and a half out of the bandit camp. So, Toby, you are leading the way. You've made your way up to this dwarf. Do you say anything to him, or are you just following along? doesn't really feel like there's anything he can say, because he's not good at peopling either. <laughs> We're Indiana jones in this shit. You are wandering along now, in the beginnings of this chasm, side by side with this dwarf, and you're watching the edges as you go by. To remind you, this is only a chasm that's 10-15 foot high, so it's not exactly the Grand Canyon. These are not falling from a great height, and in fact, in the distance, at the top of the chasm, you can see the area where there are very large boulders lining the edges. However, uh, that's all you can actually see. Can't see any people at all. You don't notice any movement, you don't spot anyone, you see large boulders lining the tops of the crevasse. I tap the dwarf on the shoulder to make him aware of the boulders on the edges as well. You tap him on the shoulder and he goes, what? I'm not stopping, we're going home! And it points at the boulders. What, you're a rock collector? Do it in your own time, as people need saving! You calm down and be quieter. You calm down! I'm dying of being told what to do! Who are you anyway? It doesn't matter who I am. I'm trying to save your life. I'm glad we agree! And their lives. And there are massive rocks on the edge of a cliff face. Well, they look quite large. They're not likely to fall on their own. That's my point. There could he be looks at you like, what's your point? Walks off. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't <laughs> So he's good, but there's no accounting for his lack of patience. You guys keep moving your way through this crevasse. Are you doing anything? I wanted to climb up the walls if I could. Scraw sees you do this. He actually drops back to the back of the crowd. And as he's going, he's just ushering people forward. Keep going, keep going. And then he sees you climbing still. and You scale it easily and Scraw sees you. You make eye contact and he nods. And he actually scales the other side. I lay low, move forward. I want to stealth if I can. So you stealth, and Scraw does the same on the other side. You see him drop down into a crouching pose, and he starts progressing forwards towards the area in the distance, and you do the same. I'm looking for the big rocks and trying to see if there are anyone near them. And you're stealthing towards them at this moment in time. You see the boulders in the distance fairly easily. You don't see any people around. And the boulders are still in the distance. They aren't particularly close. They're not particularly far either way either. It seems like there's just a lot of boulders lining this crevasse. And you turn and you see Scraw and he's sneaking along. And as he gets to within a similar range as you, he looks across the chasm at you and he looks sort of quizzically and points ahead. And then he looks back at the rocks, and he looks at you, and shrugs questioningly. What? And then he stands up, starts walking towards the rocks. Oh, no, 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 Just wait my hands a little bit. He like sees now. you, and he stops and goes back into a crouch, shrugs with his hands. Just put a finger to my mouth. 
he continues to palms up. What? I don't. But he resigns, stops, and he crouches and waits to see what you do. Right, can I make my way towards the nearest boulder? Close enough that I can see if it's being held by any contraptions or anything. About 20, 30 feet? You get within 20, 30 feet range. By the time you're that close, you can see quite clearly there's no one here. So by the time you're that close, Scrawl's like, well, fuck this. And he gets up and starts walking towards the boulders as well. In terms of contraptions, there's a big stick that's leveraged underneath the edge of the rock and it's sitting on top of another rock but it doesn't appear to be tied to anything or attached to anything there's just a big plank is there a way for me to disarm it safely i mean it's a plank of wood i'm sorry i apologize in advance <laughs> okay so you disarm the stick. You <laughs> you pull it away from the rock. Nothing happens. Good job. You now have a large wooden plank that's about your height. Yay! That's all I ever wanted. To be fair, that could have gone wrong. Oh no, absolutely. If he rolled a one, he was going to fucking let He's like, hmm, lever. <laughs> Boulder crash! You take the plank out and you realise that, oh, this is literally just there to make it easier for people to lever the rocks down because the rocks are quite large and couldn't reasonably be moved by just shoving. Just take out the sticks as I... Do you want to go from boulder to boulder, taking yeah. the planks away? Roll a strength check for me. I just want to see how many planks you can carry before you start thinking about why you're uh... carrying planks. Get to the second boulder and... You pull out the second plank easily enough, it's fine. And then you go to pick up the first plank and you realise that it's actually quite hefty solid wood. Because it's meant to be the kind of wood that's not really going to bend when you try to use it as a lever to roll a giant boulder made of stone. You try to carry both of them. Ah, shit. Um, you do this sort of Charlie Chaplin style scene where you like pick up one and you're like, oh, this is heavy. You pick up the second one you're like, oh, Christ, this is too heavy. Hang on, I'll put down the first one to pick up the second one. And you pick up the second one you're like, that's better. Pick up the first. Oh, no, the first one's too heavy. You can just leave the planks, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as you do so, you're looking at me like, you know what, I put it down, and you look up and you see Scrawl, and he's holding three and looking at you like, what? <laughs> and he goes across, shall I carry yours? Mix and Toby, you hear, as across this crowd of people, you hear that echo. You have no idea of the context at all. He decides he doesn't want to know the context of that. Do you continue moving forwards, Maren? Mm -hmm. Scrawl sees you jumping the planks. Oh, I guess we're leaving these, and he puts them back. You see Scrawl dramatically swoop down into a low crouch on the ground, and he gives you a big dramatic nod, and then continues onwards, as do you. So you guys all carry on. Toby and Mix, you get the impression that Scrawl, at least, is on the edge of the chasm above you. So you, you get the sense you have an overwatch, and you follow the townsfolk rescued prisoners to the end of the chasm, rather uneventfully, at which point... I would offer to take the lead. I relay that the pursuer had fled. <laughs> <laughs> Murren is very confident. Oh god. Outnumbered. Yes, that must be it. Scroll nods. We are an intimidating bunch. Well, you are at least. Ha ha ha! Let's keep Worry moving. not, everyone! We are halfway there! And everyone is starting to gather around. Them. Oh, that's good. Halfway there! Mom, I'm hungry! Who wants rations? And then people are like, what? They're these! And he brings out dried bits of meat. <laughs> and some of the kids are like grabby hands, and some of the people who are very badly malnourished are readily accepting anything that they're being given. And Scrawl gives away all of his food. Oh, hey, no cannibalism. This is good. Yes, in that whole four hour journey, there was no cannibalism. Hurrah. Prefer takes his place in the middle. She's just gonna stick to Toby. I'll, I'll stay at the back and protect you all. Now follow my friend here, Marin the Undying. And everyone's like, oh, ooh, that's a fancy title. He sounds brave. I just start walking. Now remember, everyone, you were saved by the scales of justice. Scales of justice, who's that? I'm not sure. I think it might be them. <laughs>
Morin, it doesn't take you long until you find the original path that you all took when leaving Greenest and before you diverted away around this chasm. You do see in the distance, just on the edges of your vision, two humanoid figures in the distance appearing to walk in the same direction that you were headed. And you do see freshly trodden tracks in the path that you originally took to the camp. And they're walking away from you. And the two figures you see in the distance appear to also be walking towards Greenest away from you, but following more or less the same path. Urbach, you have a low torch and you are making your way through the open plains. You hear in the distance rabid growls. Is this a head or behind me? It's to one side, but it seems to be at a fair distance and you estimate that actually if you continue on your way so long as you manage to stay quiet it's not likely to affect you you continue on your way making your best effort to maintain your direction towards greenest and try to avoid the attention of these growling beasts in the distance and as you move along being as quiet as possible after a few minutes the growling stops and a few minutes later even further in the distance you hear it's heading away from you. Phew. Yes, you managed to avoid any attention. Marin, you hear howling in the distance. It does not appear to be near to you per se, but all of the people that you're with also hear it. And they have no sense of how far away that is in the dark. Somebody in the group of people shriek, and people start to panic and start hurrying. I turn back around to the other guys. We've got company! Makes people panic more, and people start rushing in any which way they can. Stay what together. do you all do? Nix, Toby, you guys are in the best position for this, as you're in the middle. Toby's collar as many people as he can, It's just like, No, don't, don't run off! Stay where you are, stay where you are! Emily yeah, will help with that, and... Basically, trying to talk to them and say, look, if you guys can just stay together, we will take care of you. We will protect you. Please, just stay together. Yeah, I do decide to use Formaturgy to tell the entire group of people to stay where they are. So he casts his Formaturgy, he's like, yep. I know you're all scared, but I need every single one of you to stay where you are. If you all start running away in different directions, we can't protect you. Fucking hell. <laughs> wow, fair play. They fucking listen. They all freeze in their tracks as this giant booming voice. I know you're all scared, but okay, maybe we should listen. Damn, Toby with the rolls. Making up for that one. That yeah, yeah. But they all stop suddenly and freeze and scrawl. Says, yes, now stay together. Come, come closer to me or the lady with the light. Everything's going to be fine. I think it's best that we try to move on, but where everyone's presumably crowding towards Mix and Straw, mm -hmm. Toby's trying to make sure that he's on the outside of the crowd. But if they do get attacked by anything, he's closer to sure. being able to handle it without having to push his way through loads of people. Trying to hurry trying them to on hurry them. so that they're not just standing there when whatever is out there that has presumably heard him. <laughs> what that loud fucking noise was. Murren, you start hurrying forwards. Urbach, you would have heard the voice of Toby at this point. Even at that distance, you would have heard Toby shouting, Everyone stay together! I know you're all afraid! Because the two people in the distance are you and Leosin. Hmm. Well, that clearly means that something may be going after them, or it could possibly mean that. If I look around, can I spot them? Yeah, you turn around when you hear this in the distance, and you see that about 100 feet or so behind you, there is a large group of people, and that appears to be where the source of Toby's voice came from. Hmm. Well, I'm quite aware I'm quite that aware there's that. a strong possibility that any wolves tend to pick off stragglers from the pack, so I'm going to make my way towards the party. So, Morin, you are leading the group forwards to the best of your ability, and you see that the two figures that you were following, now after Toby shouts, appear to be coming towards you. You see the outline of a lizard man. You can't clearly see the outline of the other figure, but he has his arm over the lizard man and they are walking back towards you. And the lizard man, you can't see much in the way of detail, but they don't appear to be moving in a way that is hostile. You continue leading people towards these figures and in the direction of Greenest, and before long you encounter Urbach, who is with Lewis in. Doctor! It's good to see you. Ah, I have been wondering where you had gotten to. 
I don't think we're in the clear yet. Well, it sounds like we should probably stick together. We should. Let's keep moving. And the people are following you along, and the dwarf is shortly behind. You know these people? Yes, the friends. That one's looking rough. Did you do it? He's saying that to you, uh, back, pointing at you, pointing at Leosin and asking if you did it. I look at the dwarf. If I did it, I wouldn't really put me carrying him around. He's very heavy. You make a fair point. Let's get going. Urbach is still shouldering Leosin, however, he has been making his way this entire time. So Urbach, you and Morin are now working together to lead the horde of people back to Greenest. At this point, you guys have traversed about two miles worth of ground. Doesn't seem like it's been that much. It feels like you've traveled way, way more. But with the pace that you're at with these people, it's much slower going than traveling as a small band of adventurers who know what they're doing. However, despite this, with the teamwork between Murren and Obak, you guys make your way back to the town of Greenest in a relatively quick pace. It takes you no more than two more hours before you make it back. However, that makes it about one o'clock in the morning. When you get to the edge of town, people are so thankful to be there. They immediately disperse to their homes. There are still a smaller group of people that are with you, as they are not from Greenest. And these are mostly the ill, the injured, the malnourished. Not all of them are terribly well off, but they're looking to you. We, we don't live here, but it's... Is there anywhere we can stay? I'd, I'd... A younger looking tiefling is in the crowd. He's just looking at you. He, he looks half starved. I, I know you guys have already done so much for us, but if we could, if you can find anywhere for us to be that's just not a cage, I'm sure it would be better than whatever we've been through. Hell, the streets would be better at this point. A keep might be a viable place to take them. I think it's the only place right now. I'm on the way there anyway. I'm going to take this fella here to the medical bay there. Seriously, need some help. That sounds great. Um, any, well, may, will they have beds? I'm sure that we can work something out. Maybe we can work for a place to stay, or I, I, don't, I don't know, but... They were um, most of the town during the attack from those cultists, so I'm sure they'll have somewhere suitable for you to sleep. Hopefully feed and clothe you and take care of you, so just follow us, we know where we're going. Um, yeah, okay, um... Come on, guys, we've, we've been through worse, let's go. You guys all make your way through the town to the gates of the keep. You guys get back to the keep. Whilst I'm doing that, can I keep uh -huh. an eye open for Nassim with the intent of trying to not be seen by him? What does that sound? And it's one in the morning. So you guys are grilled very briefly up until someone actually raises a torch and sees who you are, realizes why you're there with a group of people and ushers you into the keep. Once you're inside, I'm taking the elf into the uh, medical bay. I'm just making sure the prisoners get to the keep. Trying to find um, someone who can see you to the rescuees that we have. And if there's not, then Toby will unceremoniously wake somebody. There's a handful of guards around and they're more than happy to find somewhere for the people to stay. Under guard, just because it's one in the morning and they don't know who these people are, but not in chains. They've been given comfortable beds and free roaming access. It's in the same way Doomsing was under general suspicion. If they want to leave, they can go. If they want to stay, they'll have a guard with them until someone official talks to them and sorts out the details. But otherwise, yeah, they're given whatever comforts they need. You make it to the medical area with Leosin. Nope. Mix will go with no. So Mix and Urbach head over to the medical wing. Find the governor and or wake him up to let them know. You want to specifically seek him out? Yes. Urbach, you get to the medical wing with Mix in tow and Leosin still stumbling along on your shoulder. And you find that there's a lone tabaxi there on general watch. She is sitting back in a chair with a scroll. And you recognize this as the tabaxi who addressed your issues with your finger initially. Oh, she is the head of the department, as it were. Ah, doctor, what can I help you with? It's very late. You can help me with this. I'm just going to lie him down onto a bed. Take his arm off your shoulder and he unresponsively stands there and you guide him into a bed. Yes, he does not look well. Seems to be so. What did you do to him? 
post-traumatic stress disorder, possibly beatings and injury and sustained physical exhaustion. Possibly not too much. Enough yes, he does uh, certainly show signs of this. Worry not, though. Our specific treatment methods are very good for the mind as well as the internal healing process. We should have him moderately well within a few days. How long do you believe it will take him to recover his senses? At least recover mentally capacity? I believe in a case this severe? Probably a few days. But if you wish to check on him, that is fine. Uh, so long as you do not get in my way, it's not a problem. Ooh, very well. And then I'm just going to sit down. And she looks, I'm afraid you cannot stay here for three days. Not for three days. I was merely intending to spend the next few hours with him. Uh, as you wish. She begins gentle ministrations on him. Mix, you see the tabaxi doctor start to work on the patient who is obviously severely overwhelmed at this point in time. But he looks like he's in good hands. You see Abak sit himself down. Mix is pretty tired at this point, so confident that he's with the tabaxi now, that he'll be safe. Turns to Abak and says, just let us know when he's awake and feeling a bit better so we can actually talk to him. The tabaxi looks up and says, we can arrange this if you wish. Yes, that would be very helpful, thank you. I will have one of my associates come and see you as soon as he is ready to talk. Yeah, thank you. And mix. You are most welcome. Murren, how are you going about finding the governor? I'm going to find a guard and ask him where I can find the governor. You find your way over to the nearest guard, and he is actually a tabaxi. He is going to help you. Uh, yes, um, I need to speak with the governor. It's very late. Is it urgent? Yes. May I ask why? Well, we have just returned with prisoners. And mm, will they still be here in the morning? E well, yes. Then I am not sure why you need to see the governor. Is there something that he needs to do right this moment? Well, you feel this can wait until the morning, then... Do you, well, I do not know. Do, can it wait until the morning? I guess we'll have to find out. I walk. <laughs> Tabaxi are just like, people need sleep. What's your problem? Wait until the morning. Is anybody on fire? Nah, it's probably fine. <laughs> Do you just want to make your way back to the quarters you were given previously? Or? Probably does, but now that he doesn't have the rescue he's worried about, he's getting increasingly concerned that he cannot dismiss his familiar. Over and over again to do. This is fucking weird. Ever since you've had the ability to interact with the entity that is Oz, this has never happened. And you know that Oz is directly connected to your connection with the Raven Queen. When you made your pact with the Raven Queen, Oz came into your life. It can't mean good things, whatever it means. Hmm. Something is different. He's gonna seek out Mix, because he's approaching- I'm freaking out, man! <laughs> anxious to sleep. So you head towards the medical wing. Mix. When you left Abak, what are you doing? We're, we're... Just to find some place quiet and to recover from... In that regard, then, I imagine you guys just encounter one another in the hall. Toby approaches you in a flustered panic. Toby, what's wrong? Do you remember the last time that Oz was in your sight or with me anywhere? It was before we infiltrated the camp, wasn't it? Because I don't know where he is, and I can't dismiss him. What does that mean? I don't know, it's never happened. I should be able to dismiss him and resummon him at will, essentially. He is directly connected to my connection with the Raven Queen, my patron, and I can't dismiss him and I don't know where he is. Could- is there- okay, so could anyone be stopping the connection between you two? Is that a thing? I don't know. It literally never happened before. I mean, I guess maybe, but I mean- Unless it's a, another god that's doing it, because, you know, Raven Queen, kind of a big deal. God of death, basically. Yeah, of course. Um, Mix doesn't know why Oz wouldn't be there, but she really desperately wants to try and comfort Toby somehow. Toby's tail is doing that thing that cat's tails do when they're agitated yeah. back and forth really fast. Mix puts her hand on Toby's shoulder. Whatever's happening, we will find him. I hope so, because... I do think, I know you're anxious and I know that it's not the best thing to hear right now, but maybe just for now, get some rest. Oz will be okay and we can put on full search party mode for him tomorrow morning. How search party's gonna work for a bird? Uh, we'll 
think of something. I mean, there's enough heads between us, and and we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. Mix is very convinced they can figure it out. He takes deep breath because I trust Mix's judgment. I mean, they can't be serious. <laughs> okay. Oz can it's... communicate with you, so even in a if... certain distance. I haven't, I haven't seen him, and I haven't heard him. I haven't heard him, Mix. I mean, I know that you don't know, but this bird is very chatty and sarcastic. One or the other. We will do everything we can to find him. He knows that you are here. He knows that you two have a bond and that you're no doubt worrying about him. We will find him. Okay. Okay. And Mix extends an offer for them to find somewhere to sleep near each other so that if Toby wakes up in the middle of the night and is upset, then she can try and comfort him and be there for him. He accepts that offer. Do you guys go... Back to the general area where your quarters were, and you find a spare room that has some single beds, and you scooch them nearer to each other, as this room does not appear to be occupied or recently used, and you settle down for the night. A few minutes later, you hear, Toby! Max! Toby! Max! Scrawl is in the corridor looking for you guys. Excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you. Have you seen my friend? What? <laughs> Gets out of bed and joins. As you do so, he's standing there ready to knock. Tommy! I thought we'd lost you. No, I'm right here. That's good. Oh, time to bed down then. And he walks over to the nearest bed that neither of you are occupying and collapses face first. Okay then. <laughs> Goes back to bed. Moments later. <laughs> it doesn't last. He turns over seconds later. <laughs> make sure that her head is underneath her pillow so she can just muffle out some of the sound. Morin, you found your way back to the quarters. Did you have anything you wanted to do, or um, were you just going to head to sleep? I wanted to go and find... Uh, I'll just stand outside of the room and wait until he gets back in. So, uh, back. Well, I'm going to basically take... Because my spell book looks like a set of notes anyway. I'm going to take it out and I'm take some notes down on what Leosin's Leo state of mind seems to be like. Because he's awake. I'm assuming he's awake. So he's awake and seeing how he reacts to things. How this PTSD type thing is affecting him. So you take notes on how he's responding to things. What treatment appears to be affecting him. How he's acting and what sort of stimuli he's responsive to, if any. But Trundle on back to the quarters. You're waiting outside, Marin, as Urbeck arrives. Oh, Doctor! Good to see you. Hail, Monk! Is that how you um, say it? Hail, Monk? Sorry, I've been practicing. Priest is fine. Priest, of course. Priest. Sorry. It's the robes. They throw me. Quite alright. How is our friend Leosin doing? He seems to be in an accelerated state of shock. Seems incapable of responding to much stimuli in conventional sense. Not to mention the numerous injuries he's taken. The doctors here claim they won't be in any kind of state fit for speaking, talking, or responding for approximately three days. They've not been able to gather any information from him. He barely even responds to any kind of conversational stimuli. He seems to just mutter to himself occasionally. Hmm. It seems to be common what he speaks in, but that is all I've been able to discern. Okay. Don't give him a few days, I think. Murren! Um, I'm still curious as to the nature of this letter you supposedly had from your master. You mentioned that he was supposed to be an orc. Yes. Yes, and I'm just going to pull them over to one side here. One of the things I heard him say over and over was something akin to not telling them or not telling anyone. As though he had been perhaps tortured or perhaps someone had tried to pry information out of him? This you heard from Leosin? So once I could gather his mutterings, yes. It seems very suspicious that... As opposed to the claims of a bunch of rabid cultists would just take him to torture him for no good reason, it seems like there's someone wanting information from him. I feel like there's going to be something deeper here, and I am very curious and somewhat apprehensive now about the situation that you may have gotten yourself involved in, and in relation to myself. Well, I'm still trying to get over this discrepancy of whether he is supposed to be an orcish man or indeed a dragonborn, as we see plain as day as he is what? here. What was it that strange furball fellow told you to give to him? Oh, Nassim? Yes, that's the fellow. Some kind of symbol, perhaps? Something that would belong to him? I'm still very curious about the state of Leosin. And I'm becoming obsessed because this is what I do as a weird, sure. weird ass doctor. Just studying him, taking notes on his situation, that kind of thing. So you spend lots of time going in and out of the medical wing, and the, the Baxi is getting increasingly frustrated with your presence, but doesn't say anything about it. And I imagine Obak probably doesn't even notice. Oblivious. Focus on my 
the spell that I'm preparing in relation to this. You spend the next few days looking at the notes and translating your thoughts and experiences and experimenting with various magics. Murren wants to see Tarbor. Is there anyone who wants to go in along with that? Tarbor also wants to pass along some information that he did glean in sure. the uh, vessel tent. He also wants to try and contact his patron about what the fuck is going on with his bag. Yeah. I'll go over the party when they do go to Tarbor. You all wake up the next morning having rested reasonably and you awake and you are greeted by some guards who recognize you and heard you had come back in the night you variously are congratulated for returning some of the people and people have heard that various townsfolk have returned home the news is traveling quickly that they were saved by the scales of justice edric in fact is yeah, yeah oh it's, it's, it's good to see you um you uh where's the um the doom singer he's uh He's not with you. Is he? Is he still? He must be asleep. And he tries to go past you into the quarters. Edric, I mean, Edric. Everyone realizes he's not there. Yeah. So you stop him. Um. Yes. He's not here. And that Stay is probably him. the first time all of you have actually acknowledged this. Back. It's only Dave going to realize it's right now. He brought us some time to get the prisoners out. I assumed he was right behind us. us. I did think it was awfully quiet. Well, ironically, ironically he may end up now tied to those stakes that he's so worried he would get tied up against. That's not a good not thing. A good... I didn't say it was good, I really said it was ironic. Edric looks a little bit devastated. Stakes? That sounds awful. Oh, don't worry, no one was impaled to them, so I very much doubt he'd be impaled. Don't think you're making it any better. He was kind of a prick, but he didn't... He left him behind. I him on the shoulder. <laughs> we didn't intend to leave him behind. We had a group of very agitated people we were trying to keep an eye out for. The important thing is, he bought us time to get the prisoners out. Besides, he may still be alive. They tend to torture people for, for quite a long time, though, I'd imagine. <laughs> Over his face. <laughs> Mix goes over to Urbach and just tries to keep his mouth shut. So, okay. um, I guess um, I should take you to Tarbor. Yes, I'm please. I'm sorry, guys. That's, that's really just, awful. This guy's hopes and dreams. Well, I guess you won't be needing me to keep you guys... Uh, in line. <laughs> follow, follow me. I'll, I'll wake the governor. I'm sure you can keep Scraw in line. As we took no, he doesn't need me. He's fine. Bug Everybody trusts bugbears. He leads you basically across the corridor to the quarters of Tarbor Nighthill. He knocks on the door. Um, governor Nighthill? The governor shortly answers the door. Yes, I, uh, what can I do for you, Edric? Ah, how good to see you all. Come, 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 come in, please. He ushers you all into his room and offers you seats. I I see that you are all unharmed. Did it, did it go well? As well as it could have gone. All things considered, it could have ended much worse. Yes, I, I imagine so. You've all made it back here and well, remarkably not. uninjured. We have returned the prisoners. Some of them were Excellent. not from Green Nest, as it seems. Mm, but that's unfortunate. But... I'm very sorry to hear that, and I'm sure that we can in no way replace him, but I will be willing to... Wait, he's not dead. <laughs> ...impart his reward to the rest of you. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's not. Uh, of course, my mistake. I apologize. I, I misunderstood, clearly. Um, I, th I thought you meant you lost one. The Doom Singer will probably prove incredibly difficult to kill. He's extremely agile and cunning. Well, then let us hope. Um, and what have you learned? Well, I managed to learn that it seems that they don't plan to move on to anywhere else immediately. It seems they're quite happy with the hoard that they got from Greenest, and the people I managed to talk to, they think they might be there for a fair while, a couple of weeks. Hmm. Doesn't bode well for nearby settlements. What are their plans? Do they plan to move into Greenest and take it over completely? You heard this from them? I think that's what they wanted to do. Well, then we they must, we must arm and protect the city. We must... Rally the forces and guard our borders. Plan on taking over the city. We stand no chance. We could barely defend the keep. Do you have any details about how they plan to do this? They seem to consist of multiple factions. Some sort of groups of possibly hired mercenaries? It seems that they have recruited people from somewhere as opposed to being one large cultish. They've recruited mercenaries to take over the city. I see. Then why would they abandon it? This doesn't make sense to me. I'm a little confused. I don't remember them saying at any point that they plan to take over Greenest. Sorry, yeah, the I might have that... like been remembering from someone else's conversation or something. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now Tarbo does not trust your intel. Yeah, Toby 
Toby's very. Wait, when did this happen? Like, <laughs> Toby's kind of like looking at Mario. <laughs> Because what he heard was that, at least for now, they weren't really going anywhere because they had they wanted, they had plenty of food, they had plenty of riches, conflicting with the limited information that Toby got hold of, so... This is troubling. If there's even a small possibility that this is the case, we must be prepared. Perhaps we will need more information yet. I do recall that the mercenary companies seem to have a particular type of uniform for each one. Yellow... That could be any number of things. Do you remember any uh, particular symbols? Didn't they fly three banners? Uh, there was a black one where they had a claw as an insignia on their flag. The other one was an arm inside a coat, if I remember correctly. Ah. Uh. It was very. The other one was very literal for as far as coat of arms goes. Indeed. Did uh, did any of you? interact with these yellow coats. Did you see a kobold with a large wizard hat? Hmm. They don't recall seeing such a thing. I don't remember anything like that. I saw a number of kobolds. Specifically related to the yellow banner. Well, they were certainly within the camp. Oh, he was at the entrance. I suddenly remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Curses. Wolfgang the Magnificent. That's the name? Wow. He is a fierce and powerful leader of his he drives his mercenary troop with an iron fist he is a kobold of no small talent or imagination he's the cruelest of the lot the black claw well sounds like the black claws this red flag i'm not familiar with though it could be the reavers or possibly the straw men i'm not sure nevertheless if they're recruiting mercenary companies they must have already amassed a great hoard of wealth this does not bode well not at all Oh, and what they took from green is what only bolstered their cultures. Yes, indeed. Wait a minute. All the ones we initially met would boast frequently about how they were amassing gold for their god. I knew it, they were amassing it for these mercenary companies. That's why they looked at us strangely when we tried to sneak in with the cultist cloak on. Of course. Well, they could be amassing it for both purposes. Dragons covet gold like no other. And why do they... Why, why did they... no one in the camp wear the masks of the cult or the clothes of the cult? Probably because they were inside their own camp. They don't need to be able to identify each other easily when they're in... They would just assume that anyone who is wandering around is supposed to be there. Does a priest walk around his church without his collar? Not really the same thing. Uh -huh. This is all. Think, all if you think about uh, it this way, they're members of a cult who were, until recently, attacking a settlement. They need to be able to recognize each other quickly in that kind of situation. But when you're at home, you would take off your formal wear because you are at home. In that settlement, they are basically at home. They don't need to be able to recognize each other on sight because they assume that everyone there is meant to be there. That Do sounds you know. like a reasonable assumption, but perhaps time will tell. Is there anything else you can tell me? Is there anything you need? Leoson? Ah, the, uh, the gentleman you were looking for. Are you aware of a monk perchance from this organization called Talons of Justice? I met uh, the Firbolg, Nassim. He mentioned that his master was here on the night of the attack when Murren told me that he was looking for someone, and then I spread the word around amongst my men, and I met the Firbolg who found out that I was looking for someone who was of that name, and I directed him towards Murren. But otherwise, I'm afraid I would have very little awareness of these people. I've been uh, very busy. You understand, I can't possibly expect to know every person in my city. I just wondered if you perhaps knew of the organization itself. Towns of Justice. I'm afraid I've not heard of them myself. The fact he's gonna get up and he's just gonna scurry off to the sick bay now because he's a little bit worried about something. Yeah, can um, I follow him? So you both get up in a hurry. Oh, uh, let me know if there's anything you need or any developments. Thank you, Governor. Well, I guess that's it. He's not worried about. He doesn't know why they've just suddenly got up and left out. So yeah, either. So oh, back, Marin. You guys rush over to the medical wing. When you arrive there, the Tabaxi doctors are ministrating. There's two or three of them working at the moment, and they are ministrating Leosin, who still appears to be relatively out of it. And you do see that he has a visitor who is the previously quite badly injured Furbolg, who was very bandaged up and now looks much better, as he's obviously spent the last 24 hours getting fairly increased levels of treatment, rather than the triage treatment that he would have received. And he looks up, and you both recognize this to be Nassim. He gives you a big, broad smile. Hello. So good to see you. 
Nassim, greetings. He nods his head. I was just following her back because I yeah. wanted to talk to him about Leo Sin, but we're here. I'm standing back, observing. Well, my... We see you found your companion, then. Well, rather, we found him. Yes, I asked the guards to let me know if he was brought back. And he was. So, here I am. And I have you to thank for this? Yes, we managed yes, to retrieve him. That is good. I am grateful. You are unharmed, I hope. And myself, I myself. I just wanted to observe the markings on Leosin, his features, the scar, and double checking that. You wander over. He appears to be a silver dragonborn. There is a large scar across his face. He is covered in various injuries that are now much better attended to than they were yesterday. You do notice on looking closely that one of the new injuries he appears to have is a heavy pressure mark around his neck, where, for example, if one were wearing something like a choker, and it were snapped off forcibly, it might leave some kind of abrasion. And other than that, nothing particularly stands out. But at the moment, he seems out of Oh, he's totally out of it, yeah. At this point, he's no longer babbling, but he's glassy stare into space. So while you guys are there interrogating, what do Mix and Toby want to be doing? Toby wants to find a quiet place where he can try and, I guess, meditate to contact his patron and find out what is going on. Because it's um... the only thing he can think of, Really. Sure. Next would be with Toby, but mostly to make sure that he remains undisturbed, so that yeah. if anyone comes up and has news, then Mix can usher them away. You quite easily find an area, and in fact, you just go back to your quarters, you find that this has been the most isolated place that you can be, no one's going to disturb you here. You sit down in your quarters, you get yourself comfortable, and you begin to slowly meditate. Mix, you take up a position guarding the door, and it is not long at all before... Mix jumps, jumps up jumps. and goes to close the door quietly. Shh. Toby's concentrating. You open the door. You open the door and immediately you're like, shh, Toby's concentrating. But there's no one there. Me? You hear a quiet whisper in your ear. Come to me. I need you. It's a voice that you are familiar with. Mix checks in on Toby to make sure he looks okay and gently closes the door behind her and follows the voice. You make your way out of the tower where you last stayed was, and it's not so much you're following the voice so much as you feel a pulling direction, and you are at the gate to the keep. The tug is pulling you away. What do you do? Feel very confused, feel very confused. but go along with the tugging. Mix. The voice that you hear is the voice of Titania. She is calling you away from wherever you are right now. Do you wish to follow her? Yes. You follow the sensation that you are being drawn away, and you follow it for the best part of a half hour to an hour, and you find yourself on the edge of the city, and the sensation continues to pull. Mm. My lady? Mix is very unsure why she's being pulled away so far from where she was. In the distance, not in the direction that you went towards the camp, but in the opposite direction, you see a few miles out of town there are some woods, and the sensation of pulling appears to be pulling you in that direction. Knowing your patron as you do, she is a fae, she is of the wild, she is of the woods, she does not deal with the lands of men commonly. She has no interest in cities and towns. Mix just continues to follow the pulling feeling that she's- Back to Urbach, Murren. Murren, I'd like to hear more about the organization that you and the gentleman work for. Could you both perhaps fill me in? I am very curious. Oh, um, you are of the talents of justice, are you? Yes, yes, yes. we are. That is mm -hmm. very strange. And he looks at you, cockeyed. Hmm. I believe you are playing a joke. It is very funny. Ha! 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 Toby, you are in meditation for an hour. Two. Three. Nothing seems to be happening particularly. You feel very relaxed up until you start feeling less relaxed as you get the increasing sense that the Raven Queen calls. She doesn't tend to listen. Yeah, I don't think after three hours of nothing, Toby would give up. He does give up. After three hours, like, he realises that he's not really getting anywhere. If he was, sure. he probably would have 
by now and got out of it. It's the first time that Toby's ever really tried to communicate with the Raven Queen, really. Since the pact, he hasn't really had much interaction with her, right? For reasons, keeps that herself at a distance. This is the first time he's really needed to. And he's suddenly learned that this isn't how that shit works, son. But nonetheless, you do still feel Oz. And when you meditate, you do feel your connection with him a little bit more keenly. You can still sense that he's out there, but there doesn't seem to be any response to your desire to have him return. What does Toby do when he comes out of his meditation? I not to panic, but also looks around and I guess realises that Mix isn't there. Yeah, Mix is not in the room. It doesn't help! Why am I by myself? Where's Mix? Nope. There is no note. Up to go and either try to find her or ask someone if they've seen her. You spend the best part of 40 minutes wandering around trying to find a guard who may or may not have seen Mix. It doesn't seem to have been any guards that were on rotation in the area that you guys were sleeping, and so no one there has seen her. You go to the barracks, no one's seen her there. You swing by the medical wing and see Murren and Urbach in deep discussion with the furball, shrug that off in, in an effort to look for Mix, but no one. You your finding has seen her, really. This does not you, you, <laughs> you stop by the gate, and when you get there, you find that the guards who are there have only just started their shift, and they haven't really seen anyone except for you. You're the first person they've seen all day. Uh, he doesn't really have any reason to believe that she would leave the keep without him, either. My bird has disappeared into thin air. My best friend has disappeared into thin air. What the fuck is going on? He's lost. For the first yeah. time in probably a very long time, he's actually lost. <laughs> Compass, the guard who would use us to look for Mix. He has no reason to believe that, no reason to think that she would leave the keep, so he's just still wandering around the keep. Where, where is she? Where has she gone? He doesn't know what to do. I could go out into the town, but he's also, why would she go out into the town and not mm -hmm. at least say anything or leave a note? So he's back and forthing with himself. How long do you think that goes on? For a fair while before he just has to sit down. So you wander around for hours and when you finally find yourself sitting down, you are shortly joined by Scraw. Toby! It's good to see you! I've been looking for you everywhere. Everybody seems too busy to spend time with me. You haven't seen Mix, have you? I'm afraid I haven't, but I'd see you. Would you like to spend some- we should get a drink. I think we should- we should get some drinks. I think we've earned it, don't you? Toby <laughs> dubious. Yeah. Yeah. I need a sniff one. Very well. To the tavern! And he gets up, opens the door, turns to you, looks back and smiles. No fights this time. Scout's honor. A scout. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I heard somebody say it at a pub once. I think it means we get drunk. Uh, I'm not quite that enthused with alcohol, but sure. Sure, me either, me either. I just, just one. Sniff drink, yep. Just, just a drink, drink. Just one drink. Yep. Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, he yeah. seems like he just wants one drink. He seems very focused on that. Well... <laughs> Toby is very distracted right now. He's got no sense of direction. Scraw just said, do you want to go to the pub? And he's like, yeah, okay. Someone tell me what to do. Pub, okay, great. I used to be so good at being focused on shit, and now I don't know what I'm doing. Things will come together, right? It is now the seventh day of the fifth week of spring. We will come back to Urbach and Morin talking with Nassim. Toby and Scrawl going out to get r r Rick's on. I mean, to get a drink. We will discover perhaps what is happening with Mix. Dun, dun, dun. If Toby hasn't completely fallen apart by then. Toby. And that's all we have time for this week. Or Toby indeed. Join us next week for episode 11, Whilst the Dust Settles. The song you heard at the beginning of this episode was Extravaganza by TRG Banks, and the song you are now hearing is While You Are Here by Ending Satellites. Until next time, travel safe, and remember, the scales of justice are here for you. Always. Always.